Hi everybody, today um, we're going to be coloring something a little bit different. Um, Brianne from Pigment here, by the way, hi guys. Um, we're going to be coloring something from Jim Henson's series that we have. Um, it's going to be a Farscape piece. So it's kind of like a comic book looking type feel um, illustration, I would say. So I'm just going to go through how I would go about coloring this. I don't have a particular way that I really color a piece like this. I just kind of use different tools for textures and um, have a couple different ways of I might approach doing skin on smaller faces. And that's about how the video is going to go today. So I'm excited to color this piece. Again, it's from uh, featured uh, artists, if you want, if you want to call it that, Jim Henson. We also have the Labyrinth and the Dark Crystal. We actually have a couple different books from the Dark Crystal, which is pretty cool. Okay, so all that being said, let's get started. So I didn't pick out um, a palette yet. I'm just going to actually maybe start out with. Hmm. Maybe I will start out with the Fig palette. Yeah, I know that I'm going to need some pastel -y type and I'm going to need some deep colors too. So we'll see how um, this progresses here. I'm just going to flip it. It's already on freehand mode, so that's perfect. I'm going to start out with this color that it's already on. I'm just going to deepen it a little bit on the scale here. I'm going to go to my fills and I'm going to uh, grab my, yeah, let's go with fade for right now. I'm just going to kind of drag this through a little bit here, both angles. I want kind of a, I, don't, I want it more darker towards the edges and um, a little bit lighter through the center here, kind of like the shadows and the angles, and then get that gradient uh, color around the characters. Then I'll probably switch it over to blue, maybe try this lighter blue, just to kind of get that gradient look happening. That's better, turn up the opacity a bit, now I'm getting somewhere. I like doing this because it's, uh, I've done it in quite a few videos actually. It's an easy way to mix colors so you can get like a lighter color than a color. You get the colors in the corner. So it's a really easy but fun uh, way to get the colors that you're looking for. Now I might just deepen it up here and just kind of get my color flowing down here as well. Okay. You can switch it up and go any which way you like with it. So I think that's good for the background. We can also add some more texture and stuff as we go along, which I probably will do. But I like getting a base color down so I kind of can see how I want my other colors to go. Okay. That being said, I think it should be probably darker down here. A little bit more shady there and a little bit maybe lighter here. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to switch it back over to automatic. And we're going to start coloring in uh, these characters. So a good way is just to kind of fill um, your colors and then you can add all your shading and uh, detail afterwards. So smaller faces are a little bit harder to add detail to because it's a smaller area, but there's still tips and tricks to do it very effortlessly and easy. So I'm going to actually, one way to get a little bit of easy shading right off the hop is to use the pillow tool uh, to fill. 
So we're going to do that. I'm just going to zoom in on these faces here and uh, just get the color kind of in there. I'm going to use different variations of this color. This is actually um, the Summer Essence palette and I use that color in there a lot for skin. But we want to switch up the skin colors back there a bit so maybe I'll just go to the basic skin tones and Kind of get a couple variations of skin color going here. I don't want them all to look exactly the same. I'm going to add some extra detailing and whatnot into it anyway, so it's fine. I actually kind of prefer this skin color. It has more like tan to it. Get this hair. So bring your colors, or don't worry about that. So I'm gonna get these uh, three gentlemen out the way. I'm not sure what color I'm gonna make her i'm not going with the traditional colors from farscape it's just i'm just going in and having fun and kind of doing my own experimenting so um if you're cons if you're kind of wondering oh that's not the right color as well i'm just kind of doing my own thing and having fun here and that's what coloring is all about try to get the colors maybe a little bit close but really i'm just Coloring this. I'm gonna want some shading around these guys. Okay. Okay. Now we can start doing the skin a little bit and the eyes and whatnot. I'm just going to go here and I'll make sure I'm on automatic. And then an easy way to add shading on a small piece, which I also use in the big pieces, is the airbrush tool. But if you want like more of a comic type book look, you can also go with the paintbrush and just kind of get like those uh, broad kind of streaky strokes in there. And for, since I used the airbrush uh, so much with skin, I think I'm going to just do something different with this piece and just use some different tools to show you that the look can be achieved um, with other tools. So I'm just kind of doing like these strokes. I'm just trying to get like this almost like when I'm doing other stuff, I don't want an edgy shading. I want it to blend. But with the comic book type look, I want more of a edgy uh, type of blend to it. So that's what I'm doing. The paintbrush tool is going to leave some uh, texture to the face, which is fine. So I'm just shading the face, highlighting it. I'm using the same tones. I'm just um, lightening them or darkening them, depending on what I'm doing, to get the look that I'm going for. And I'm using the paintbrush tool for this.
and then I'm lightening it up and just kind of adding a little bit of highlight to some areas. And I still might shade it further too. I'm just kind of, uh, trying to get like a base here going. I still might go in with other tools and do more, but for now I just wanted to show that um, you can do uh, like skin with different tools for different effects. Another really good tool, um, if you don't want all the streakiness, it would be the marker. The marker, it's almost like, uh, I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, Copic markers, but a lot of people, they're quite expensive, but a lot of people use them for doing comic books. You can get like that kind of cool uh, layered look of skin tone really easy and it's more smooth and jagged but it's still a really uh interesting look so we can use that a little bit too just to show a couple different uh ways of getting that comic book feel if that's what you're going for And you just get like a more edgy, I don't mean edgy like edgy, I mean edgy like the lines, the lines look more edgy, they look more like you're getting that look, that comic book type color. You have to adjust the brush size and opacity though because you don't want it looking you want that nice balance. And you can keep on blending, which is nice with it too. And it, the marker blends really well with the other layers, which is nice. So you can kind of like fade it in and get that look. So yeah, you can totally do it with the paintbrush. I got a little bit of texture there with the paintbrush, but marker would probably be the choice or more put together look. Okay, so I think that's good for now. I'm not gonna fight with them too much there. And then I'm just gonna go grab white so I have it in my recently used colors. Actually, I'll use the off, use a little bit of an off white here. Uh, bring the opacity up a little bit. And I'm just gonna color in these eyes with a little bit of uh, shading. You can't really add color to it because there's not really a pupil. So I'm just going to use like an off-white. This guy has, uh, is the only one that actually has pupils. So we could give him an eye color, probably just do like a simple green, darken it up a little bit. Don't really want his eye color to stand out too much because the other guys really don't have a lot going on in the way of their pupils. So. Let's kind of outline them in white. Get this guy's lip colored. Just 
Just pull that in. Just gonna keep the insides of their mouth either white. I think white might look better actually. Yeah, white seems like the more comic booky thing to do. I'm just blending a little bit here. It's okay for it to look blotchy. I just find this guy looks a little too blotchy. Gotta have that balance. Okay, now let's do their hair. Now I'm just gonna go to, to keep it fairly simple and straightforward, I'm gonna go to the browns and just kind of give them each their own uh, unique brown color, I guess. I'm gonna bring the opacity up though, I wanna fill it quick. You can, I can just use the fill tool, but I mean, it's such a small area, it's really effortless to, uh, to use. A, like a tool to fill. It's not a big deal. And go to this guy and do the same. Give him some brown hair. I'm just keeping it basic with the brown. I mean, I always find it hard to give guys funky colored hair. I don't know why. I do it with girls all the time, but with guys I always seem to stick to real colors of hair, but I'm gonna have to try it one day. Maybe with a more edgier type guy with like tattoos and stuff. These guys look like they work in an office. Okay, now let's do this guy. We'll give him a lighter, a little bit of a lighter brown. Yeah, I'm digging the marker. I'm probably gonna color a lot of this with the marker and technical pen. Okay, so now it's gonna shade in here a little bit there, just around the hairline. Okay, now let's color their outfits. We can pick some funky colors for their outfits. Maybe I'll do this guy in like a blue. I'm just going to color him in with the marker tool. I like the marker because you get like this variation of like streaks that is so, I don't know, it's just, I find it gives a really cool effect. And then like you deepen up the color, kind of bring down the opacity a bit though in the brush size and just kind of add some shading and contouring to the coat to give it some color. And it just makes like a, makes a neat effect.
Yeah, so I think I'm going to color um, most of this with marker. I just like the effect that I'm getting with it. Really kind of want to do, like I was saying, the comic book type style effect. It's kind of what I'm going for here. Um, So you see how I'm just mixing and uh, blending these colors and to get like this like choppy look. And then I'm just kind of going up and down with uh, the opacities. Hmm. I better put it on automatic. Oh, there must be a little bleed here somewhere. Or tool on accident again. Pretty typical of me. So yeah, then I like just mixing the colors to get like this kind of effect. And you can do it as much as you want until you get the look that you want. It's really good for jeans, for uh, doing jeans and pants and tops and stuff. Gives a neat look. At least I think it does. But you really got to, uh, the one thing that's a little bit time consuming about using it is that you kind of have to play with the opacities and the brush sizes a lot to get the effect. Otherwise it just ends up looking not right. You can't use high opacity the whole time to get the look is basically what I'm trying to kind of get across. Turn up on full opacity though to fix any little errors. Works well for that. So there's one guy colored. Let's move on to the next. I'm gonna try and like give them all um, different colored outfits. So they look a little different. So maybe this guy we can do like a green suit. Just gonna bring up my brush size opacity. Okay, so let's color in the sky.
and bring down the opacity and just add some variation of green in here. Okay, so that guy's colored. So I did the same thing. I just used variations of the green and the brown to kind of give them a look. I'm gonna do that a lot in this. And then this last guy, I think I'm gonna do him more like black, white, and gray kind of look. So let's do that with him. And then those guys will be done. Then we can move on. Sorry for my talking too much, but just know that I am using the marker tool for this whole video mostly which wasn't planned <laughs> it just kind of uh, was a decision as I went on I never totally know what I'm going to do um, I've always been this way as a colorist I know lots of people like the plan especially a traditional colorist I have a lot of friends who uh, traditionally color and uh, they plan they swatch their colors and they go through everything before they go I have never been like that. I just start coloring and then my imagination always never seems to never let me down most of the time anyways and I just kind of as I'm going I get these ideas. It's the only way I really know uh, what I want to do. Every time I try and plan, I have tried to plan, I always end up changing it and never end up totally following uh, through with it. So. I mean, whatever works for, for you though, I mean, that is just how my process works. Everybody else is different and whatever works for you is awesome. Whatever makes you comfortable and uh, some people love to plan and I've seen a lot of my friends make some really gorgeous, um, like amazing pieces from doing a little bit of planning. So whatever helps your, pro your process. But for me, I would say 99% of the time I'm, I'm winging it. But I, that being said, I do do watch a lot of tutorial videos as well um, from artists that I respect and admire their work. And I do, a even though I go in without a, like a concrete plan, I always have an idea of what I want to accomplish before I start a piece. And I always try and use new techniques and stuff that I learn while I'm coloring. So I might not have um, a plan on my color scheme, but I always have a plan to use techniques 
and uh, different ways of coloring that I have learned from either videos or just from talking to friends. So it is important to have technique when coloring, even if it's not a hard, it doesn't have to be a hard technique. Just knowing how to blend colors and stuff makes a big difference on how your pe your overall piece is gonna turn out. Like right here, I'm using, might not seem like a technique, but I am. I'm using the marker and I'm layering it in colors on different opacities to kind of get this look, right? And I kind of, found this out just playing around and experimenting with brushes and I thought you know that's really cool I like that and I'm going to start using it more and I have been and it works really well uh, for these types of pieces there's a time and a place for everything and this is a good time and a place for this tool And it's not hard to do. It's not hard to do. It takes a little bit of time, but it's not hard. By any means, it's not hard. So all the three guys are um, done right now. We're about a half hour into this video. Let's see if I can wrap this up in an hour. So I'm going to do, I want to do her skin, but I have, I kind of want to make her like a colored skin tone. I'm going to need my airbrush for a second just to fix this mistake. Airbrush blends a lot easier. Okay. There, blend it up, good to go. So I'm gonna maybe do her skin like purple or something, I'm thinking, just to keep it kind of like it's supposed to be um, you know, a uh, funky type of, well, well, farscapes, right? So it's a fantasy. So let's grab the purples. So this would kind of touch base on um, doing unusual skin tones. When you do unusual skin tones, um, you can do any color you like, obviously. Um, the trick is to do it like you would do any other skin tone. Um, there's layering, just like if you were to uh, do uh, like a regular skin tone, like tan or brown or black or white or whatever you want, there's layering. So just keep that in mind. So see how I'm adding, you know, I have my shade and I'm kind of layering my purple and then I'm going to go back in with my dark purple and kind of put some back. So there, it's the same process. You just have to be aware that it's not going to look right if you don't have uh, those layers in there. So I'm going to make her skin purple. It's not gonna work. That pink isn't right. I think I was right with these colors here. So yeah, you just kind of have to work it out. So I'm gonna leave the darker purple around the edge to kind of have the shading. And if you notice, I'm constantly playing uh, with my brush sizes and opacities when I'm using this marker tool. Cause that's really how you're going to uh, get the effect that you're going for or that we're going for right now.
And when you're doing the comic book style, um, it's important to highlight certain areas. to get the look. And on different, that's why I keep on erasing going back because really the opacity um, brush size comes back to that again. And I'm just pushing colors around until I get exactly what I'm looking for here. There's certain ways to get like the light shading down. And then I just kind of want to blend all these dark colors with the lighter color. So you can still see it underneath, but I'm gonna go until I get exactly what I'm going for here. I'm blending the light out, but then I didn't like it. And I'm going back for a darker color and I'm actually liking this purple. This is kind of the color I was going for, so perfect. Let's get this down. And these blending of colors really does kind of add this interest to this character. Just want to get rid of some of it on the forehead though, I find it's a little bit too harsh there. There we go, now I'm getting the the look. Too dark. So I'm going to bring the opacity down, color match that. And I'm just going to bring it up just a little bit more and just kind of blend this through now. Okay, there we go. I actually got it the way I wanted it. Woohoo! Okay, now I have to do her eyes. My white is gone because I played around with so many purples trying to get her skin the way I wanted it to be. Well, I wasn't actually sure, right? I knew I wanted to do something uh, funky, but I wasn't sure how it was gonna go. So that's why it took me a bit longer to do, but that's okay. We got there in the end and that's all that matters.
but yeah, playing with uh, unusual skin tones. I do that a lot. I actually color unusual skin palettes a lot. Not usually with the marker tool, but I do it um, with, you know, the airbrush or technical pen. I really like coloring unusual skin tones. I'm just gonna add a little bit of uh, highlighting to her skin because I find there's not really any highlighting going on. So just do a little bit. I'm not gonna overdo it. I guess I got my base colors the way I wanted them. The highlighting is the easy part. Okay, I just need to fix this over here. And then maybe her one eye is purple over here. Maybe I'll just leave it the same and do it over here. And then just maybe do maybe like pink. Ah, that's fine. And now her jacket it seems like it's already kind of like black. Her eyes would look better darker. It's maybe just like a spot of white. Yeah, that's better. So I think I'm gonna do her jacket. Maybe like that purple, let's see. A bit darker. Yeah, I like that. Let's do this. I don't wanna do any green on her. I did green on this guy over here. Don't wanna do any green on her because the monster dude in the middle, he's going to be green, I think. And his hand's going right through her, so I don't want, want there to be contrast and color. So he's really, I'm saving him for last because he's really the, the focal point of everything here. there. Oh no, that's his leg. That's his leg. Okay. That's all I need to get is what I got. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Maybe this should be purple too. Yeah. Okay, that works. Just kind of adding a little bit more color in here. Okay, so everyone is colored except for the macho guy in the middle there. Just get a little bit more lighter pink here just to brighten it up a little bit. Let's do him. So, like I said, I'm probably going to do him green. I might um, actually use splatter. 
on him. Let's see. Might be like a green and orangey type deal here. So let's use Serape since it seems to have some of the colors I need. I'm not going to fill him. Well, maybe I will. Yeah, okay, I'll fill him in with the marker. Okay, a little bit darker. Cassidy up. I'm just going to zoom in because there's a lot of little spots that need to get colored and they're really hard to get from far away. Okay, so his hands are coming through that glove. So, I'll just color his thumb up to here. So that's how it is on the other side. Okay, and I have a feeling he's wearing pants unless you want to do this part. Like his legs, well, I think it's gonna look weird. I'm just gonna leave it as wearing pants. And then we'll use the marker like we did before. Just fix that mistake, whatever. I hate hitting the back button too many times to fix something. I'll just go in with the airbrush and fix it. I'm just doing the same thing, layering, uh, getting those kind of shadows in there. I just want to fix this little area here. I was trying to press the back button to, uh, why is it not working? What's going on? Oh, my brush size is way too big. That's why. There we go. That's better. Create a little bit more of a glow around him too, but that's okay. I actually kind of like it. Okay. So now I'm going to go to splatter tool because I use this when I'm doing um, certain like cartoony animals or um, 
monsters and stuff, dragons. I use this to get a little texture. You're gonna to wanna to leave your opacity very low though on your brush size as well. You don't want big splotches on him. And then you just kinda of smaller than that. And you just kinda of run it across in areas to get like this textured skin effect. And I'm going to use the bright green and the orange for it. I'm going to mix them and layer them. So see, I love the way it like kind of just adds visual interest to like it just really kind of brings the skin out and you can even add a little bit of yellow in here if you want for a little added highlighting effect. I'd be a little bit more sparing with the yellow but just in certain spots to add that effect. So there you got like this highlighted greeny looking skin. And I'm just going to go over to my fill tool for a sec. So there's a couple of just small areas I want to get taken care of like these nails. There was something missing over here. Yeah, I need to do something about that. Um, where is it? Like this dot here to cover that I noticed. You got it. Then I'm going to color, I need to color his tongue in. Okay, I'm on pillow, jump pillow. And it's going to be green as well. And you can also add a little bit of texture with the splatter on the tongue. I wouldn't use any bright colors or anything, just maybe the lighter green. I'm going to go to the white and go to the fill. And you just give him some blue eyes or you could give him red eyes if you really want to be creepy about it. Not that you can see it all that much. I'm gonna like, I think I'm gonna leave his teeth actually the color that they are because I doubt he has white teeth. He doesn't seem like he goes to the dentist very often so I'll just leave them. Color in these nails. Just a couple areas. Nope, it's not gonna work. Have to go to, I'll just use marker, cause why not? Yeah, maybe I'll keep it. I was gonna say, oh, maybe I'll have one ugly, gangly green tooth, but. Let's highlight the beard a bit. Maybe the ears here. Under the eye, maybe. A bit of deeper shading there. There.
Now we can color in his uh, clothes. Now, he seems like he'd be wearing red to me. So, let's use the marker tool. I'll bring the opacity down just a smidge here, brush size up. And just start coloring in So I wanted to kind of stay away from uh, tools that I use a lot in this video because I wanted to show that really you can do anything with any tools you want. It's just a matter of applying a different kind of technique like, oh, his arm is green here. This is, ah, yeah, I'm pretty sure his arm right here is green. I'm gonna have to back the bus up here for a second. I did not realize that that was his arm sticking out. So what is that his sleeve and that's his arm? Gloves. I'm pretty sure that this is uh, his arm and then he's wearing like high gloves. If not, oh well, not a big deal. That's what I am doing. Seems like it anyway. here. No, maybe I'll just go to this. Because that's what I was using anyway. So just go to that. So I get the exact colors. I didn't realize that was his arm. It's hard to tell sometimes with the way, like that comic book way of drawing is. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Uh, we'll fix it up in a jiffy anyway. Not a big deal. Presto, finito, fixed. Back to my recently used colors marker tool and then let's finish this guy's gloves here. I'm gonna have to hand color this one because the illustrator didn't cut off the glove here which isn't a big deal. Easy fix. So he's kind of wearing like, uh, he's wearing brown and red together. I don't know if that's a faux pas.
just to give it a little bit of highlighting. And then we'll go back to reds. Just kind of deepen up this red a little bit in spots towards the edge, bring down the opacity. really impressed with the cool detailing that you can really get with the marker tool. Okay, now let's color his legs. We'll go to our recently used colors because I think I'm going to keep the matching his upper here. Maybe a bit darker. And I think that looks good the way it is. It almost looks like camo or something. It looks pretty cool. And then his collar up top, I'm just going to do actually a simple just pillow fill for this. And then for his belt buckle, I haven't quite decided. I'll go to my metal colors and use my metallic fill. And go back to my recently used colors and I want to color in this little area here first. Put a shade in there. A little bit of glimmer on the belt buckle. Let's go to straight up white. So I'm just layering my highlight on my belt buckle. Then I'm just gonna do some touch-ups or just about home free. I might just do very quickly. Maybe just outline some of the teeth in white, just the outer edge. Just because I find they're blending too much into the picture, they should kind of stand out a little bit at least. So just outline the outer edge, but leave them looking green. Now I'm gonna get my airbrush tool. I'm gonna color match this. I'm just going to darken up some of these areas here. Get any spots that I missed. And this black. 
just kind of, I need freehand mode here. Just gonna, I know that there's detailing of cog works and stuff in the, the ceiling, but honestly for this, for the way I colored this, I don't really want it. I'd rather it just be kind of the way it is. Just gonna add some kind of streaks up there. second. Oh, I accidentally colored this dude's hair over here. And that's why I go over my picture after. Easy fix, so it's just a small area. I know I used marker, but I'm not gonna go through all the trouble. Actually, maybe I should have left it on freehand. Just trying to make it look like something's almost like coming out of his hand, like a glow. Like something's kind of. Like he's gonna shoot you with his magic. Okay. Just playing around with it till I get exactly what I'm going for here. Okay, now I might take out my blur tool. Make sure I'm on automatic. And I'm just gonna blur this out a bit. picking up from his head. I gotta be careful. Kind of gives like that blurry effect. You can use it on the clothes a little bit too if you want. You will lose some of the marker look though. And I kind of, that was the whole reason of using it. Let's use it a little bit in some spots just where the highlights are. And leave it and then you can add a little bit of maybe we'll just try something here quickly I hit the eraser button again I don't know how, I'm not even any, I guess double tapping on accident. Okay. 
Yeah, it looks cool, actually. And with that being said, I'm almost done here. I think her face would look a little bit blurred just to soften some of the lines. Okay. And I think I think, I think, I think we're done, guys. Except for maybe right here. Just want to darken maybe this little area up here. Yeah, maybe it's okay like that. Maybe what I'll do. I like it when the backgrounds look like cohesive to how the flow is, right? That's why I usually do my backgrounds first, which I did here, but just a couple things I missed the mark on I'd like to fix. I always review when I'm done, make sure that everything's kind of The Dark Fantasy has a true white and black. It's actually the only uh, pigment palette that does. So I'm just touching up a little bit here. In there. Sometimes I add just a little bit of framing. I think it kind of gives the picture a little bit of depth and interest. All right, guys. There is our Farscape comic inspired picture from Jim Henson. I hope that you guys really enjoyed this video. Uh, if you need any tips or tricks or you have a video that you want to see in the future, please uh, comment below. We'll get to that for you. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for joining me again. This is Brianne from Pigment. Bye.